Okie dokie. So, sponging texture and using rags. Um, I know that you know this, Jack, but one of the key important things with a sponge is to always get it wet before you work with it. Um, different sponges are going to have different kind of characteristics. They're going to make different kind of marks. Uh, you always want to be aware and look for something like a manufacturer cut on these because they are natural, but um, they do get really big and so they're cut down to be sold. So, you know, look out for really hard cut lines on these when you're preparing to use them. You can always kind of tear them up and stuff like that to adjust the, adjust the shape. Um, but yeah, before you use a sponge, you always got to get it wet so it's pliable. Um, you also probably know this, but just as a reminder, you always want to squeeze out the excess water. They want to be damp and pliable, but not soaking and dripping. Um, this guy's going to make a weird shape. I can already tell. I'm probably going to use this one. Um, so we're going to do a panel. Hey, we're going to do a panel of uh, one gray sponge and one black sponge on top of our white base color. My board's not the right color, but that's okay. Um, so the gray on white is gonna be a lower contrast sponge. The black on white is gonna be a high contrast sponge visually. Um, stronger difference in values between black and white than there is between our gray and our white. Uh, but that's also going to influence a little bit of the technique so the gray, we want to let have a little bit of a softer feeling to it. That doesn't mean we want to let the water soften out our paint too much. What it does mean is that the um, edges and things can kind of fade into each other more on your gray board than on your black and white board, the high contrast one. So, Anytime you're using a sponge, um, after it's damp, you squeeze all the water out, but it, it still has a little dampness. You want to load the sponge by getting paint on a tray and then kind of working the sponge around on it so you're getting an even paint load. Um, I'm not covering the entire thing because my hand's going somewhere and I don't need paint all over where my hand's going to be. I've also chosen this to be where I'm holding because I think it's a more strategic position that I can manipulate this with. Um, but yeah, I encourage you to play around with these, kind of get a feel for them, figure out what feels good, figure out what gives you more control, things like that. When applying the paint, um, you, you also want to make sure it's loaded, but it's not overloaded. So I'm not getting a huge, big glop of paint from my initial thing. I'll show you what it looks like when it's overloaded. Well, that's not even overloaded because I don't have enough paint on my tray to do that. Um, yeah, and that's really, oh, so ugly. Much more ugly, right? <laughs> so how much paint is loaded into the sponge and how evenly it is charged and spread throughout will directly affect um, the quality of the, the look you're creating. A big thing with sponges is that, you know, they all have natural shaping to them. Um, but again, it's something that if you use the tool in a, you know, every time I'm touching it the same way down, it's going to make a stamp-like mark because there's characteristics in this tool that it's just like a really organically complex stamp that we're using. Um, and so we don't want to let a certain characteristic of the sponge start making a pattern, right? So if I just did a line all the way across and I never changed it, you're gonna start to see a really subtle little pattern forming. I mean, this is real obvious because I just did a line, but even spreading it out, I'm still gonna have that kind of like negative space in the middle. It looks kind of like a weird little hoof print or something. So the big thing to do when you're sponging, tap it and constantly be turning the sponge so you're getting different edge characteristics. You're making different stamp shapes in here. If there's a chunk where it wants to make a bigger blob and deposit of paint and color, you're gonna be moving where that lands um, organically around your panel. The other thing is how you kind of develop and build your sponge passes to create a nicer cohesive look. So as I build and turn my sponge and kind of vary the pressure, I'm going to start developing this area. It's going to start looking nicer and more and more um, like a kind of 
complete surface. So if I leave a lot of negative space throughout all my sponging, it's not gonna look as nice or as convincing if we're trying to make this look like moss growing on something or rust or rust, not rust, rust. Um, just kind of leaving a bunch of little sponge taps all over looks whack, does not look good. So it's also how we kind of start building up density in our sponge. Um, so that's not to say I want you guys to completely gray or black out your panel by sponging it. I would like there to be a kind of 50% white, 50% applied sponge color, roughly, kind of when you like go and stare at it and cross your eyes. Um, but yeah, so when you're spinning your sponge and twisting it, you're gonna create different shapes. Also play around with the different edges and surfaces, so I don't have to use it this way the whole time. Kind of coming around this and using edges, stuff like that. A big thing that you're gonna wanna avoid is spinning while the sponge is in contact with the surface because it makes a very obvious, swirly, goofy thing, right? That does not look good. That's not like the rest of what I'm doing, right? So it's always a light tap. It's a very bouncy technique. I find that is when I have the most success is when I kind of pretend like I'm doing a gentle little trampoline with my hand or something, you know? Um, if you press too hard, it will get clunky. Um, but you can see you can get very different characteristics from one sponge chunk depending on how you're utilizing it. So as you guys are working on your panels, play around with how that feels. You know, it's okay if you want to do a corner where you let it get really dense to see kind of how that feels and looks for you and how to avoid it. Um, do you guys have questions about this? Is this making sense and offering you tactics to employ? Awesome. So you want like a good density? Yeah, so this low contrast one should have a nice density. Um, it, it can have some softer, you know, lighter sponge in there. You know, like my paint's not quite as thick and heavy as I'm doing this and like it's more watered down, it's very gentle. Um, but yeah, you can see kind of some of the other work around the room. Um, and definitely, I think the ones where the gray kind of really more softly disappears into the white from a distance. That's, that's a better example of low contrast. Um, I can show you guys, I'm gonna show you real quick, just um, kind of over a section of this with the black, just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, and again, you know, change, change sponges, try a different, you know, density one, try a different shaped one. Um, all the same paint, you know, the black and the gray from our other project. So this sponge is really gonna make a shape for me. 